Three years ago, I took a data analyst online course that radically changed how I take data analyst courses. And ever since then, I've been able to 10x how much I gain from not only data analyst courses, but also online courses in general. So in this video, I'm going to break down my process of learning and how you can do same. What's up guys, Wally here. Welcome back to the channel. For some reason, people on the internet seem to think that once you shell out some money for an online course, the contents just magically transfers to your brain and you don't have to do any work to get it in. It is why sometimes people feel lost after taking certain courses. Um, they just simply can't place it whether they gained anything or not. I remember when I used to have my struggles, there was a particular online course and I had just shelled out a couple hundred dollars for and I wasn't taking it seriously. So I would turn on the video lessons and then go ahead to do other things. I was basically treating the course as if I was watching a movie. To top it off, the course had a limited access period of 60 days after which you lose access to the materials. Luckily, I was able to maneuver the answers. And so when I completed the entire course, I started to feel guilty for not applying myself enough as I wasn't sure if I really had a grasp of what I just learned. So I had to go back and study it all over again. It was while I was studying all over again that I started practicing active recall, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But before enrolling or at the point of enrolling for an online course, certainly there are some things you need to consider and put in place to ensure your learning foundation is rock solid. And a number of those things are making sure that you're curious about what you're about to learn. Are you taking this course because someone told you to, or are you taking this for your own self-development. Will this course answer any of your burning question? And are you excited about the prospect of learning something new? Oftentimes, answers to these questions lies in taking some time to scrutinize the course outline. From the course outline, you can tell if it's going to be a worthy experience. Now, based on the course content, you can then start to draft your goals. I typically like to keep it simple to one or a maximum of two goals. So for example, if you were taking the IBM Data Analyst Professional Certificate course, which by the way, if you haven't seen that review, you can click on the link down in the description below. The way you could draft your goal will be to ask yourself, what is the number one skill you want to develop from taking this course? It's like saying, if you do not walk away with anything from this course, what is that one thing you will be working away at the end of the course. This sort of honest introspection is important because without it being defined clearly, it's easy to get sidetracked amidst the host of information cramped into that online course. So after defining your goal and diving into the course, you can now start applying active recall to your learning. Active recall is an evidence-based studying technique where you continuously test yourself as you learn. In other words, as you are taking in the knowledge, you are testing for your understanding immediately and at future intervals to ensure that you do not forget what you've just learned. And there are three ways you can use active recall for a data analyst course. The first method is what I've called data substitution. Data substitution is when you replace the data being used in the example task with a different data set. In other words, instead of using the data set provided by the course, you go out, you look for a different data set and you use that to replace the data set that was provided in the course. Now, this data set could even be personalized data sets like your bank transaction, examination scores from your academic transcripts or any other data sets that you were able to lay your hands on maybe through Kaggle. The idea is to replace the data set and see if you can come up with the same conclusions with the original data used in the task. So what this does is it deepens your engagement, your curiosity, and your interaction with the course. Feel free to apply the same principles to your capstone projects. Um, you can easily replace the data sets and formulate your own questions to fit. Now, the second method is by way of task comparison. This is where you attempt to complete the same task or assignment using two different programs. So let's say you are given a data set in an example task and asked to perform an exploratory data analysis using Python. After completing the task with Python out of curiosity, you can then proceed to use that same data set and solve the same problem using Excel. That way, 
you are not only repeating the task to better understand what you've been told to do, but you're also picking up details about how to solve problems and build competency in both programs. The third and the final way I use active recall is through task modification. It involves tweaking steps to complete certain example tasks. This step is very much complex than the previous two and will take some time to master. It usually involves adding or eliminating certain details to alter the results you get. So let's take a visualization task, for example. Say in the example task, the type of chart chosen was a scatter plot chart. You could decide to alter that and select a waterfall chart instead and see if you could still reach the same conclusions. Or if it's a block of code, taking out certain lines or adding new lines of code to change the results and assess the impact. Eventually, the cost to master data analysis and get the best out of your online learnings involves repeated attempts at practice questions and lab exercises, personalizing them, and then formulating questions and modifying the solutions to test your knowledge as you go along. Finally, one very important thing to do for every online course that you take is to create a folder on your computer for each course, create multiple folders within that folder, and then save your end of model summary, exercises, answers, or any other thing you find useful into each folder for each chapter or each model. This will help you preserve your course material should in case you lose access to them after completing the online course. That way, if you need to refer to the course or review your summary notes later in, in the future, you have everything stored in one place. So to wrap this all up, what you must understand as a data only self-learner taking online courses is that being actively involved in your task by way of data substitution, task comparison, and task modification while learning are critical. So get creative, look for new ways to solve old problems such that by the time you do get a job, you're not just waiting to be told what to do by virtue of your learnings. You are actively looking for new ways to solve not just old problems, but new and exciting ones as well. So I hope I have left you with a better understanding of how to get the best out of your online courses and hopefully you found this useful. Do smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.